Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Recruitment Marketing Masterclass. Very excited to be presenting this content to you guys today. My name is Gary Murray. I'm a media consultant at LinkedIn. I work with our UK enterprise clients. Um, and basically, my role in LinkedIn is to ensure that uh, our clients get the best ROI and the best value out of the talent media that they purchase through LinkedIn. In terms of the goals of, of, of what we want to achieve with the Recruitment Marketing Masterclass, I suppose what, we, what we're trying to achieve here is to give you a holistic understanding of recruitment marketing. So everything from what recruitment marketing is to why it's so important for you to incorporate it into your own recruitment uh, strategy to how LinkedIn can help you um, achieve the best ROI on your recruitment marketing campaigns within LinkedIn. And we have a lot of content to cover in, in quite a short period of time. So what we aim to do uh, again today is to make sure that we cover all the kind of most important aspects, the questions we get asked most often, the tips that we feel are most valuable to you. Um, and if you do have any additional questions or you need us to elaborate, uh, as Lisa had mentioned, you can either ask in the Q&A session afterwards or you may even be able to follow up with your relationship manager or my counterpart, uh, Media Solutions Managers, that might support your business. The agenda today is broken down as follows. So starting at the macro level, what is recruitment marketing? Why it's so important? Then we'll move into the ad formats that are available to you for your recruitment marketing efforts. So what LinkedIn can, can, can support you with in terms of ads. Then we'll talk about the targeting options that LinkedIn um, have available to you on LinkedIn. We'll then talk through uh, the importance of campaign planning and how to create your own recruitment marketing campaigns. We will then cover campaign optimization and how you can uh, monitor and optimize your campaigns in real time to get the best return on your investment. And then finally, a question that comes up quite often, uh, we will cover how to curate content and how to create content for your recruitment marketing campaigns. So as you'll imagine, uh, a lot of content to cover, but, but we'll, we'll get it done, don't worry. Uh, starting at the macro level, as I mentioned, first of all, it's very important to define what recruitment marketing is. There are tons of different definitions out there, but this is one that I feel is nice and simple to understand and kind of explains what recruitment marketing is in a nutshell. So recruitment marketing is finding, attracting, and nurturing talent for current and future positions within your organization. Essentially, what we're trying to achieve with recruitment marketing is to generate a pipeline of talent now and for the future. And if we look at the candidate journey, we can see that recruitment marketing plays a fundamental and foundational part in the overall candidate journey. And it can be broken down really into two key areas. It can be broken down into phase one, which is employer branding, so making uh, LinkedIn members are potential candidates aware of your company, of your talent brand, who you are, what you do, and then uh, encouraging them to engage with your talent brand. So encouraging uh, potential candidates to investigate more about your company, why they might um, be interested in working for you at some point. The second phase of a recruitment marketing campaign is uh, what we term the hiring phase, where you're trying to encourage candidates to um, seriously consider you as their next employer, essentially. And how we would do that is send them to LinkedIn Life pages and send them to career pages, et cetera. But really getting them to seriously consider you as their next employer. And then finally, and I, I suppose the ultimate goal of a recruitment marketing campaign, whether it's a long-term or a short-term campaign, is to encourage potential candidates to apply for roles within your company. And then the kind of gray part of the funnel at the very bottom, that's when your recruiters come in and that's when they do what they do best with the pipeline of talent that has come their way through the recruitment marketing campaign. So there are ample benefits to recruitment marketing and, and what we want to do is highlight the key benefits, I suppose, to um, a successful recruitment marketing strategy. So starting with quality applicants, as we'll explain today, when you run a recruitment marketing campaign, you send targeted ads to, uh, to applicants across the LinkedIn platform and encourage them to apply for roles. So you, you define who you want to see your jobs. And in, because you're doing that, essentially you're uh, increasing the quality of the applicants that 
come through to your jobs and ultimately apply for them. We see higher response rates, uh, whether your recruiters are sending out in-mails or however they reach out to potential candidates, we see higher response rates because these candidates are now aware of your employer brand. They're aware of what you do, they're aware of what you stand for, your culture, values, beliefs, and so on. And we also see a reduced time to hire because taking it back to the funnel um, graphic that we had just um, showed you, we can see that a lot of the legwork and a lot of the, the, the time that would typically go in to um, making the aware of why they should want to work for you, positioning yourself as an employer of choice, um, letting them know what, what will um, essentially be their journey once they, once they join your company. All that is done by the ads that have been running in the background, and it's only it's, it's, it's then when your recruiters can come in and kind of take it from there. So um, we see a reduced time to hire because candidates are much further down the candidate journey. Again, they get in contact with your recruiters or vice versa. And as a result of these three benefits, of course, we would see a reduced cost per hire. So if you compare um, your cost per hire with a recruitment marketing campaign versus perhaps a more traditional route or uh, using agencies, et cetera, uh, we would very often see that you'd have a reduced cost per hire as a result of the efficiencies created by the first three benefits here. Now, some of you may have seen this, this figure before, and, and it's a very important um, statistic and it's especially important when we're talking about recruitment marketing because approximately 70% of members across LinkedIn are passive candidates which means that these individuals are not necessarily actively looking for a role, even though they may be open to being contacted, they're not actively looking for a role. Um, and these candidates represent a big opportunity on LinkedIn because other uh, companies are not necessarily competing uh, for their attention or, or in contact with them. But you can be in contact with them when you uh, incorporate a recruitment marketing strategy into your into your overall recruitment strategy because what you can do then is you can make these members aware of your employer brand and inform them about relevant opportunities at your company and you can do this at scale and, and possibly more importantly in a non-intrusive way remember they're currently cold candidates what your campaigns will do is turn them into warm candidates for your role so as and when they're ready to make a move they will seriously consider your organization so that kind of covers recruitment marketing um, um, broadly, should I say. And now let's go into the ad formats that we have available to you. So how you can potentially uh, uh, convey yourself or put yourself forward in front of these um, LinkedIn members. It's important when we talk about ad formats that people consume information in different ways. And what works for one organization or one target talent pool might not work for another. And that's why you need to kind of test and see which ad formats are generating the best return on your investment. Um, but we'll talk through now the different options that are available to you. And there are three different products that LinkedIn have available to you when it comes to talent advertising. The first one and most popular, I would say, is sponsored content. Um, and sponsored content is highly flexible ads that appear in the LinkedIn news feed. So they look and feel very similar to a standard company page post, but there is a significant differentiator between sponsored content and company page posts, and that is that company page posts will show to your followers, and they will show to anyone who may have who may visit your company page. Uh, they'll show to them also. Sponsored content opens you up to the entire LinkedIn uh, network across the globe. And what you can do with sponsored content is you can target specific individuals based on uh, multiple different different targeting facets that we will talk through later on. Um, and really pinpoint the individuals that you want to see your message. And sponsored content comes in three different formats, essentially. The first format, the standard ad, or the single image ad that it's often referred to, um, is a great ad uh, for getting to the point and for generating clicks. So even though it's, it's by far the easiest ad to create because it's text, an image, and a call to action, we quite often see that it's the most effective at generating clicks. So if your goal is to drive traffic to a website or to a job post, perhaps standard ads or single image ads, as we often call them, is the, is the right approach for you. Carousel ads are great at generating engagement. So similar to other platforms, carousel ads encourage the, the viewer to scroll and kind of 
see more, investigate what exactly you're telling them. And they're a nice way to increase engagement. And um, they're also quite good at generating clicks too, I must say. And then finally, video ads. Video ads are uh, excellent at storytelling, at giving additional context about your company, about your employer brand, etc. We often see video ads at the top of the funnel, but they can work quite well as well at generating um, traffic through. And that's sponsored content. Now bringing us on to display ads. Again, you may be familiar with these display ads. They're automated ads that appear on the right-hand side of LinkedIn. Um, you may have seen them as you scroll through LinkedIn. You might not have even realized that they're actually ads. But display ads, again, come in three different formats. So the first format of display ads is a follower ad. Um, and these do exactly as they say, I suppose. They're dynamic ads that pull in the member's name. They pull in the member's face and put it beside your logo. And what they do is they encourage the member to become a follower of your company page. Job ads are just as intuitive. In fact, they're a little bit cleverer again because job ads will not, pull it, not only pull in the member's uh, profile image, but it will also look at their professional history and it will compare it against the jobs that you have posted on your LinkedIn uh, jobs page. And what it will do is it will match up a job that you have posted or multiple jobs that you have posted with the member's professional background and show them a job relevant to them. So very clever ads. Um, and, and essentially what they do is encourage the member to view the job and ultimately apply for that job. Finally, we have custom ads. Now, custom ads uh, enable you to tailor the top messaging, the bottom messaging, as you can see in the image, and also send the member to a website either on or off the LinkedIn platform. And typically, nine times out of ten, we would see custom ads being used for uh, pipeline builder. Uh, pages and pipeline builder campaigns where you send members to that page to generate leads. Which brings us nicely to the final product we're talking about, which is pipeline builder. So pipeline builder, uh, essentially a pipeline builder is a custom landing page available to you where you can um, talk about a specific opening or opportunity at your company, tell the member what you're looking for in a candidate, uh, tell them what you offer as an employer and ask them to express their interest. And once they do that, their professional uh, information is stored on your recruiter folder for your recruiters to then assess whether they're a fit for your company and potentially reach out to them. Pipeline Builder needs to be supported by either a sponsored content or a recruitment ad campaign or both. So essentially what you would do is you would create a sponsored content or a recruitment ad campaign and you would link to uh, this pipeline builder page, essentially. So how it all works together, and, and again, we'll talk about this throughout, but there's no one way necessarily or one formula that will work for all companies uh, or all target audience, but there are different approaches you can test and take to see what is the best um, and optimum uh, approach for you. But we can see here, for example, that if you were running a campaign um, purely based on sponsored content, this is perhaps how you might lay it out, where you'd have a video ad, a carousel ad, uh, then a kind of call to action ad in the hiring phase, sending a member to a pipeline builder page. You might even decide that uh, a different rotation of the ad formats is working better for you and working better at funneling members down to the, the final stage of um, applying for a role. You might find out that actually if you have um, a time constraint or if you need job applicants fast, perhaps you want to pair sponsored content up with uh, display ads uh, or we quite often refer to them as recruitment ads, which is may I'm, uh, why I may be jumping in between the two names. But you may decide to pair them both together um, to get maximum impact and maximum ROI on your campaign and so on and so forth. So there's no one way to leverage this content, but your media solutions managers are here um, to help kind of advise you and suggest different approaches that might work best for your individual requirements or campaign objectives. And now we're on to the targeting options available to you. So those are the ads. Um, now let's talk about how we can target members and get those ads in front of these members. And it's important to note that our professional data is by far, by far, by far our biggest differentiator on LinkedIn. 
members come onto LinkedIn to learn and grow professionally. And in order for them to do that successfully, they need to provide certain information so the, so the, the content that they're um, given is relevant to them. And that information is essentially their online CV. So their online uh, or their work history, essentially. And by using this information, we can make sure that we pinpoint individuals with uh, messaging relevant to them at the right time um, uh, to, to get maximum return on your campaigns, essentially. And that's what we're going to talk through now. So um, here are actually just some of the targeting classes available to you. There are more available now in the last few months, such as interest, et cetera. But these are the key targeting facets that are available to you on LinkedIn. And again, it's about finding the right combination of targeting facets for your specific requirements or needs. Um, so you might, you might find, for example, that you're looking for a specific talent pool and you, the best way for you to reach them is to target company, target by company name, um, the job function of that individual, the skills that that individual needs to have, and the location that they're based. Alternatively, you might decide that actually for the, for the individuals you're looking for, you need to, you want to focus on company industry and the field of study. So what they studied in college, essentially, and their location. Or you might even take a more simplistic approach. And I think probably the most, uh, one of the most effective approaches, which is targeted by the individual's job title. So what they say their title is on LinkedIn. And again, the location. So again, no one way to do this but plenty of opportunity and plenty of different ways you can potentially find the, ta the target talent pool that you're most interested in on LinkedIn. And when you're trying to decide this, so when you're trying to think, who exactly are we looking for? Or who exactly do we want to generate a pipeline of talent of? Essentially, what I would say is that you should look uh, and, and trying to find what your need to have there for your role now and in the future and what you're nice to have there uh, for a role now or in the future. So for example, if we take this, uh, this um, example here of need to haves for an engineering role, we can see, okay, uh, they need to be within 30 kilometers of London because we found that people outside of that distance just won't make the commute. So they need to have that. They need to have a minimum of five years experience because that's what the role requires and we can't make any exceptions. They need to be a senior developer and they need to have Java and AWS skills. So that's fine. These are all the targeting criteria they need to have and these are all targeting criteria that you can put into LinkedIn Campaign Manager tool to find those individuals across uh, either UK or beyond. Some of the nice to have, perhaps they, it'd be nice if they worked in a large company because you also work in a large company and they're familiar with the environment. Perhaps they need to work in the fashion industry, or I say need to, perhaps it'd be nice if they work in the fashion industry because again, it's a similar environment to where you operate. Perhaps they, uh, it'd be nice if they had a master's degree and it, it might be nice if they had studied computer science. It's important to make the distinction between what's needed to have and what's nice to have because what will happen, for example, if we, uh, targeted an, an audience based on the need to have and also layered on some nice to have. For example, they need to be in the fashion industry. That's fine, but what you're also doing is you're excluding um, talents that don't work in the fashion industry that might actually be perfect candidates for your role. So you always need to make these kind of subjective assessments as to whether um, the nice to have are more important or not, because if they're not, perhaps you leave them out and you send your ads out to a wider town pool. Remember all the time here when we're running um, advertising campaigns, recruitment marketing campaigns, we're trying to reach talent at scale and allow them to come to us. Um, and we don't want to omit any talent that might be really good candidates for a role. So always, uh, always look at that trade-off between the need to have and the nice to have. If your audience size is particularly large, and we'll talk through kind of optimal audience size later on, if it's particularly large, you will have the kind of luxury or the flexibility to layer on top a few nice to have because um, the audience size will allow it. If your audience size is very small um, and campaign manager will give you an indication of your audience size, then perhaps you might decide, okay, I'm not going to layer on top of these nice to haves because I want to make sure I reach a good number of people with this message and with this opportunity. 
And then finally, we're kind of moving into content slightly here, but when you define your target audience, it's also good a uh, good time to define uh, what you think matters most to them. So this could be based on internal research that you have, or you could be leveraging the LinkedIn Talent Insights tool that when you type in a certain target audience, it will tell you uh, in a rank um, from the uh, one to 10, what that specific audience tends to be most interested in based on surveys and analysis. And you can use that information to really create your content, which we'll talk about later on, and to really kind of trigger an action from that specific talent pool. So again, we can see here, perhaps they're interested in compensation or benefits, perhaps it's a good work-life balance, perhaps they like a challenging job or they need job security more than anything, uh, or they want a convenient commute. And it's all those little pieces of information and nuggets that you can then incorporate into your sponsored content or your display ads to, to really um, get the best impact and get the best return on your investment when it comes to recruitment marketing campaigns. A few tips when it comes to targeting. Now, these are general rule of thumb tips. They won't apply to everyone all the time, but there are questions we get asked quite regularly, and this is some general advice that you can take with you today in action. So start specific. When you're building out your audience, start specific. And if you need to broaden it out to build your audience size, then you can do that through multiple different ways. But if you can build a good audience size with a list of job titles and locations, then start there. Um, when you're looking at audience sizes, I would recommend that you aim for a minimum of about 20,000 members if you're running a hiring campaign. Might sound like enough, but a, a lot. But again, when you're targeting um, members at scale, you need to uh, make sure that you have a good audience size there. Uh, if you're running employer branding campaigns, perhaps aim for a bit of a bigger audience, about 50,000 members, just to make sure that you're getting your message out there to um, a wider audience base. Again, bearing in mind the funnel and, and how this audience base will reduce and reduce when it, when it goes down the funnel. Don't laser focus. So you don't want to omit top talent by getting too niche with your targeting. We gave the example previously of um, if you include the nice to haves and they're not 100% necessary, you're omitting certain talent. Also, you need to make uh, bear in mind that in a lot of cases, members won't completely fill out their, their, their LinkedIn profile. So even though you might be looking for someone with Java skills, it's not necessarily um, going to be always true that that member will have put Java skills on their LinkedIn profile. And if they haven't put it on their profile, you will be excluding them just because of that. So always, um, always consider that not all profiles will be fully complete by, by your target audience. And finally, qualify with content. So just uh, on the back of that previous point, if you go broader, especially in a hiring campaign, just make sure that you are crystal clear in your actual ad copy. So um, if I was running a campaign looking for engineers with Java experience, but I was afraid to include Java as a, as a necessary skill in case it wasn't mentioned on a profile, in the ad itself, I would say, we are looking for engineers with Java skills. And I'd really spell it out because in a hiring campaign, you're paying on a cost per click basis. So it's not necessarily that you want as many clicks as possible. You want as many relevant clicks as possible. And by doing that, then you make sure that you're only paying for clicks of individuals who've seen your ad, seen that you need an engineer with Java skills, and decided that that's them and they want to find out more. So qualify with content when it comes to your ad copy. Campaign planning. Uh, it's very tempting at times to kind of get ahead of yourself and launch your campaign without really putting the preparation in. And what I would say is don't do that. Um, failing to plan is planning to fail, as the old, say, as the old saying goes. And um, the investment that you put into planning your campaign out at the start will really um, stand to you at the end of your campaign. So in terms of how you might go about planning your campaign, here's some general guidelines. So whether it is uh, a case that you're planning an always-on employer branding campaign or just a hiring campaign or a combination of the two, uh, when you're planning out your actual campaign, consider the following four pillars. And that is uh, define your audience and target object, uh, define your target audience and objective. That's, that's fundamental and the first thing you should do when you're, when you're planning out your campaign. Next is consider your timeline. So are you running an always on campaign where you constantly want to be on front of a certain talent pool? For example, maybe 
uh, it's an employer branding campaign, which typically would, we would see as always on, or are you running uh, a campaign for a limited period of time? For example, you might have a specific hiring need. You need to know that at the start, and you need to know how long you have and how long you need to run this campaign. Um, budget, you need to know your budget, so define how much you, you, you have to invest in the specific, or in the specific objectives. Um, and we can help you there, for example, if you have a specific hiring need or you need so many job applications, your media solutions managers can really help you there work backwards and say, okay, so if you need this many applicants, then you would need to invest this much um, to generate that based on forecasts and what we've seen. So definitely let us know. But as a general rule of thumb, I would say try not to spend too little per day or you won't really see an impact. And I suppose as a basic minimum, minimum, again, it's a rule of thumb guideline, but as a basic min minimum, spend about £100 per day on a campaign, uh, even if that means running it over a shorter duration. And then finally, you need to know what the key performance indicator is. So what does good look like for you? When the campaign is finished, what metric are you going to be focusing in on? Is it the followers you've gained? Is it the job applicants? And so on and so forth. That's really important to know and define. And here we can see an example of a campaign plan with those four pillars um, highlighting the different areas. And we will make this template available for you. I believe it's available to download um, from this actual uh, webinar. And so you should see it there. And again, we can see that we've defined the audience. We've defined what the objectives are, which in this case, and that's kind of difficult to see, but you'll see it when you open up the Excel, is employer branding and hiring. The budget is also um, indicated there, and the timeline is a four-month period. And the key performance indicators at the end there, there are a few there. I would recommend that you look at a few different indicators, but that you focus on one specifically. So if that's follower growth, if that's job applications, that's what you will be optimizing for, and that's what you will be keeping an eye on uh, throughout your campaign and at the end. And I suppose once you launch your campaign, then you've done your plan, you know the ads, you know the audience. Uh, that's where kind of the fun starts almost because you can optimize your campaign. You can see how it's performing, if it's keeping on track with what you have kind of planned or hoped for, and optimize accordingly. And there are a few ways you can do this. But before you do, and again, before you start kind of getting ahead of yourself, you need to ask yourself uh, this really important question. What are you optimizing for? What is the key performance indicator? And there are so many you could potentially be optimizing for. For example, a few um, potential uh, objectives of employer branding campaigns. I want to increase my follower base. If you want to increase your follower base, when you run a campaign, you are optimizing for uh, one thing essentially, and that is uh, it's a low cost per follower. Because the less money you spend per follower, the more followers you get overall at the end of your campaign duration. So you'd be optimizing to get that cost per follower as low as possible. If you want as many ads as possible in front of your target audience, so kind of back to just brand awareness, getting the exposure, getting your ads out there, you want to optimize for a low CPM, so a low cost per thousand ads. And essentially, how you will achieve that is making your ads relevant. When LinkedIn sees that your ad is relevant to your target audience, when they're engaging uh, more than they would be with other ads out on the platform, you will get a higher quality score, and with a high quality score, you pay less per thousand impressions. Uh, again, in the whole vein, uh, and, and based on the objective that LinkedIn has as a company, which is to make the member experience as relevant and um, seamless as possible. And finally, uh, I want my target audience to watch my video. These are just some examples, there are tons more. But in this case, again, I want my audience to watch my video. Well, then you want to aim for a high view rate. Sometimes you might even say, actually, I want them to watch the entire video in full. There's another metric you can track called completion rate. Whatever metric you want to track or optimize for, make sure you define that at the start. When we get to the hiring phase of the campaign or a little further down the funnel, the objectives tend to be um, there's not as many, I suppose. Um, and I suppose if we really wanted to focus in on the key, key uh, uh, objective that we see time and time again is I want to get the best candidate at the lowest possible cost. In plain, simple in English, that's what uh, most advertisers in the hiring phase of the campaign will want to achieve. 
And essentially what you're doing there is you want to get the lowest cost per applicant. And that's almost 100% right, but not quite, because what we really want to get is the lowest cost per quality applicant. And it, the, reason, the reason for that is because you can have 100 applicants, but we want to have, um, but one good applicant, I suppose, is better than 100 applicants. So one really good and relevant applicant will be a lot better and a lot more valuable to your company. And what we would say there is that you should talk to your recruiting teams. When you're running these campaigns, talk to your recruiters, hiring managers, and ask them, what's the quality like of the candidates that I'm sending through to you? If they say, for example, they're too junior, then we can tweak the targeting and we can uh, increase the seniority levels. If they say they're too far away, they don't want to commute, we can make changes there, of course, and, and we can optimize your campaign based on real-time feedback from your recruiters. This information isn't always available, and, and perhaps you won't always get that um, real-time feedback from your recruiters, um, in which case you can still optimize, of course, per cost. Uh, for a low cost per applicant, for a low cost per conversion, which basically means when we send a member to your website, if they apply there, we want to optimize for a low cost per conversion or a low cost per lead if we're leveraging the LinkedIn pipeline builder page. Ideal scenario, if we can look at the quality, great. If not, we we'll focus on the next best thing. And now I want to show you an example of optimizing content. So this, we talked about ads, we talked about targeting. This is how when you're running a campaign, you can optimize the performance of your ads within that campaign. So the first example here is looking at one ad with a simple tweak. Uh, basically, the text had changed, everything else stayed the same. And we can see that by making that text change, we achieved a click-through rate of 33% higher. It's important to note here that this campaign was optimizing for clicks. That was the sole goal of this campaign, was clicks. Um, so one simple change here, uh, increase the click-through rate by 33%. And if we look at the actual ad copy, again, it might be quite small for you, but the ad that it performed better started with statistics. So we might take a learning from that and say, this target audience wants kind of statistics and facts. And we can see that in the results of the campaign. In the second version here uh, of um, A-B testing, you may have heard that term, that's what's happening right now. In the second version here, we decided to A-B test based on changing the image this time. So not the copy itself, not the text, but the image. And uh, here we can see that it went from kind of stock type image to an image of a, a person. And again, uh, well, in this case, the click-through rate uh, is 160 or was 160% higher because of that simple change. So it kind of highlights how one simple change to the creative um, can really have a massive impact on the overall results of your campaign and why it's so important to test different variants. And it's very easy to do. You simply create one ad, click the duplicate button, make a small tweak, and let them both run beside each other. But again, really stark examples of how small changes can make big differences to your campaign performance. And you can learn from them and apply these learnings again and again as you run future campaigns. It's important that you review your ads regularly. Um, and as a rule of thumb, this guideline here is that you review them every two weeks. That's where we see kind of the optimal results. You don't want to, you don't want to review them too often or, um, or leave it too long either. But in this example, I'll show you how you would essentially go into your campaigns. If we look at example of campaign one, running with three ads. So three ads running within the first campaign. We can see that after two weeks, the third ad isn't performing as well. So regardless of the objective, let's say, for example, it's, uh, it's follower growth. So let's say that ad three is delivering a higher cost per follower than ad one and two, and it's bringing down the overall average. So what you might decide to do then in the following two weeks is carry over ad one and two, leave them running, don't make any changes, but, but pause ad three. And instead of running that ad, introduce a new ad into the rotation and see how that performs for the following two weeks. Not only does that allow you to see how that performs, but it also keeps the content fresh in front of an audience that may be seeing some of your ads more than once. Let's say in those two weeks, then ad two kind of um, doesn't perform as well. Perhaps it's outdated, it's welcome, it's been seen too many times. After that, you might decide in the, the, the week five and six to carry over the two best performing ads and again, introduce a new rotation and so on and so forth. And you can keep doing that as your campaign's running 
to really optimize the creative um, the ads within your campaigns. When we're looking at this, uh, a few guidelines when you're optimizing your ads. Optimize for your objectives. So don't get caught up in click-through rate if that's not important to you. Don't get caught up in engagement rate if that's not the core goal of your campaign. Make sure you're looking at the metrics, and there are tons of them available on the Campaign Manager tool. Make sure you're looking at the one that's important for this specific campaign. Rotate your ads evenly. So when LinkedIn is um, launching campaigns, it actually automatically defaults to optimize for performance. So essentially, LinkedIn, the Campaign Manager tool, it looks at which ad is performing best and it sends more of those ads out. What I would say is if you can actively uh, monitor your ads on a bi-weekly basis, I would change that option to rotate them evenly. So what you're doing then is you're giving every ad a fighting chance to show how good or bad it is. You're learning from them and you're manually optimizing. Have at least two to three ads running per campaign. That will again open you up to be able to learn from your campaign, but also give you um, give you a chance to get better results than just running one ad and giving you a chance to, to really see what resonates with your target audience and review your ads regularly. In this case, a bit two weeks, I think is, is, is a nice sweet spot. Other ways of optimizing your campaigns are uh, through targeting. So when we're looking at the demographics of a campaign, this is a campaign that's live and it's optimizing for job applications which, uh, as we mentioned earlier, are uh, also called conversions. We can see here that amongst the target audience, uh, members with the consulting function, so members with the job title that falls into a consulting function, have the highest conversion rate. So the highest uh, rate of people who view the job and apply for that job. We can also see that members of your target audience that have job titles that fall into the education function have the most applications. So the most applications have come from people who fall into an education function. Um, and if we follow the line kind of to the left, we can see that that's almost a direct, well, that is the result of the fact that more ads have been served, more impressions have been served to that audience because it's a bigger chunk of the overall audience. So again, depending on your objectives, depending on what you're trying to achieve with this campaign, you might say, um, okay, actually, it's good that we're getting applications from people in the education function, but they're not our priority. And I would prefer to focus our ads towards people in the consulting function. So I might remove education entirely. Or you might say, perfect, I'm getting people in consulting, I'm getting people in education, I'm getting people across the board. Operations though, and art and design, people in those two functions, they're not really converting. Um, and I can kind of see why, because maybe our position isn't suitable for them but I am going to remove them from my target audience because they're costing me money, essentially. So you can make all different kind of assessments and findings from the um, demographic information on your campaign. But again, it's up to you to, to be subjective and to kind of decide what actions, if any, you should take. Content curation and creation. This is kind of the final uh, part we want to cover today, and it, it's all about... Um, generating your ads. So we get it quite a, a lot when we're, we're working um, with clients. They'll say, where do I start? How do I create my ad? Um, like, uh, is it something I have to do? Is it something you do? And, and that kind of thing. Essentially, it's something that you will do, but with our support. And um, there are a lot of ways to, to do this. And there are a lot of ways to, to create your content. What I would say is a lot of the employer brand content is already created on your company page as a company page post. You just need to get that out to your target audience. So um, remember the company page post, no matter how cool, no matter how great they are, no matter how much time has gone into them, they'll only show to your follower base or to people who visited your company page. So don't worry about uh, repurposing or reusing content towards the target audience because the likelihood is they haven't seen it anyway. So a lot of your employer brand content is already available to you on your company page posts. And LinkedIn Campaign Manager tool has an option where you can, when you create your campaign, you can basically go in, look at what you've posted on your company page post, and check the boxes beside the post that you want to sponsor out to your target audience. And when you're doing this, I mean, there's so many different content types that you can potentially leverage for your sponsored content campaign, especially in the employer branding phase of a campaign. Everything from thought leadership, so education on, uh, educational and provocative insights from leadership or C-suite, 
you could perhaps sponsor some of that out of it on your company page. Career tips, so just general advice on how your target audience might excel in their career, uh, industry or field. Subject matter, matter expertise, so insights from the experts within your company to the experts that you hope potentially might come to your company at some point. Industry news, so telling target audience about uh, external factors that may be affecting their roles. You can talk about life at your company, again, really letting them know why they should want to work at your company, the workplace, the culture, the team, events, perks, benefits, all that kind of good stuff. And again, you look at any uh, LinkedIn company page, you'll always find something about that uh, uh, on, on their posts. Employee testimonials, if you have some examples of general, uh, genuine experiences and advice from like-minded individuals, you could repurpose that. Uh, company news, so product news, awards, events, updates. This kind of might look like it ventures into trying to sell product services or updates, but it's not necessarily. Uh, it's important that people considering you as an employer know about the products you, you, you sell, the services you offer, um, awards you may have won. So it's all very important information. And then the last point here, anything value added. So anything, even outside of all these pillars or guidelines provided, anything else that when you're looking through your company page posts, you might think is relevant or interesting to that target audience, sponsor it out to them, send it to them. Um, you'll quickly see whether they, it is getting the results you expected or not. And to that point, you can also look at the uh, metrics or the performance of your organic posts also. So you may not be aware that when you scroll and look at your organic posts on your company page, you can see the engagement rates they've got or the click-through rates they've got. And it will give you a really good indication as to how well that content is performing. And then you can decide based on that, okay, I'm going to sponsor this out because it's performing well to my follower base it's likely that it might perform well to my target, tar uh, target audience as well. Um, and then when it comes to content creation, again, all the points I had just mentioned there, if they're not already company page posts, you can either create them as company page posts for your followers to see and also to sponsor them out to your target audience afterwards, or you can create them as dark posts or direct posts, which essentially means they will just be sent to your target audience. You can do either or. Um, but when it comes to content creation, we very often see that it's, it's a requirement, especially in the hiring phase of a recruitment marketing campaign. So when you're running a hiring campaign, it's, it's, it's typical that you might need to create your content from scratch. Um, and again, I suppose what, what we want to say is it's not that difficult. There's a few guidelines you, you, we would suggest you adhere to, um, and I'm going to highlight them now. If we look at this example of a hiring campaign for sales professionals in Dublin and London, we can see that it starts with a value transaction. So not just we're looking for this, we're hiring here, but it tells a bit about what LinkedIn is like as a place to work for. At LinkedIn, you will learn, develop, and grow in a way that's meaning, uh, that meaningfully changes the trajectory of your career. So this is what you get. So back to what matters to them. In this case, sales professionals will get a, a career trajectory. They'll get to learn and grow. Next bit here, um, that's when we have to be clear on what we're looking for in return, essentially. We're looking for talented sales professionals to join our Dublin and London offices. Are you in? So what we're doing here is we're saying, if you're a sales professional that's willing to work in Dublin or London office, then we're interested in you. And, and kind of, we're kind of saying if you're not, then uh, don't click the ad. But if you are, then read on, essentially. Make sure the image is relevant. Um, fairly obvious point, but make sure the image you're putting in is relevant to the message that you're conveying. Uh, very often, quick tip, we see that images of, of employees in a company um, tend to resonate really well, whether it's teams, uh, individuals, etc. Just make sure that they're not stock imagery, because stock imagery, um, sometimes you need to use it because they have no other alternative, but it is quite obvious when stock imagery is in an ad and they don't get as, as much uh, clicks or engagement as genuine, I suppose, images of people within your team. And then finally, in the, in the call to action, make sure you include that also. Anything like learn more, apply now, et cetera, just make sure it's in there. And that's, that's essentially how you create a hiring ad. So um, that pretty much um, covers everything. I suppose the last slide here is just to show you when you're creating your content in the employer branding phase and in the hiring phase, 
here are different areas you might decide to send members to. So if you want to link somewhere, here are some um, suggestions. You could, you could send members to your LinkedIn Live page, to the company page. You could send them to LinkedIn articles that are relevant to your post, to your company website, blog posts, um, to press releases, perhaps about events or awards you've won. With an employer branding campaign, you might not even link anywhere. You might say, don't need to link anywhere. In fact, maybe your goal is follower growth and you want to make sure that the only click of your ad is the click of that little follow button on the top right. So a link isn't necessary, but there are some inspiration and I suppose suggestions. Uh, in the hiring phase of a campaign, you can link to your LinkedIn jobs. You can link to your LinkedIn pipeline builder pages and you can link to uh, company website jobs and perhaps other areas where you may where you may be generating leads, etc. And that's it. That that kind of wraps up our um, recruitment marketing masterclass presentation. I hope you found it valuable. Um, very interested to hear your feedback from yourselves.